Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are in part two of this wonderful interview that we're having with the band leader of Conjunto Imagen himself, Mr. Ernie Acevedo here in the house. Don't forget again, April 1st, Ernie Acevedo and Conjunto Imagen at SOBs at the Pia Canela Coco So Ernie, it's so good to have you here and sharing all this information with us. You know, we can keep you here for days, man. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> there's so much. Listen, you're talking about over 35 years, man. Uh, actually, I, in my career, at least 45 years. So <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. How how would you describe your music? The music that uh, you're currently <clears throat> making or that Conjunto Imagen has done over the last 30 years? Yeah, well, you know, our music is uh, um, typical. It's uh, it was originally originally originated. In, in 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 a Cuban style, but huh? uh, you know we took it a little bit away from there and brought it to a little more modern. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, our band is not you know not too many groups out there that that has that style, and uh, besides conjunto clásico, mm -hmm. um, when we started it was more about conjuntos. Today is more about big bands and, and, you know, it's different style of music. So, but our music is more, our music is more, I create my music more for the dancer than, than to the listeners, you know? I love that. Uh, I love that. Yeah. Tell us a little I, bit about the, for people that don't know what a conjunto is, if you can explain what that is. Yes. Um, conjunto is um, actually, uh, is, is originally is, is uh, trumpets and, uh, Bango and congas with the with the tres guitar with the Cuban tres guitar right piano and bass that would be a conjunto type of music conjunto the difference of conjunto is that uh, conjunto doesn't have timbales you know and you may have bands today they do call themselves conjunto with timbales but more they were more pailas so when Pacheco started um, when he went from charanga to conjunto. He started with the pailas instead of bangos, so they like they look like timbales, but they're pailas. They're, they're like a, 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 a somewhat a, um, sound like uh, bangos instead of uh, timbales. So he used to play that and and uh, and a conguero. So our music is more um, like I said, it's more danceable than like something like a Tito Nieve, Mark Anthony, you know, that type of music, which is different from what we do. So I remember, you know, talking to Tito Puente once, and he was telling me that he started off as a dancer, and which is why, you know, when he creates music, he the dancers are part of the inspiration. Uh, do you feel the same, or what's your main source of inspiration? You know what? Um, um, I do dance a little bit. I, I, I'm kind of a little behind because it's been... <laughs> You know, I mean, I used to dance when I was younger, but um, I I remember listening to, you know, my first conjunto band was um, listening to was uh, Johnny Pacheco. Uh, there was a place called The Corso, and there Johnny Pacheco used to perform. And um, the tres, the sound of the tres, I mean, the, the band, the sound... It used to run in my blood, man. I used to like, you know, <laughs> I'm standing in front of the stage and I'm like, wow, man, you know, I wish I can, you know, I wish my band could sound like this, man, you know, because I was, I was just starting out with my own group. And I was like, you know, I don't know anybody that plays guitar like that, you know, who plays guitar. And that, that sound was like, it like, it hooked me, man. I tell you, I, I was like, wow. And it happens to be that when I joined the, the Rafi Santi band, it was a conjunto. You know, he, he, it was just, I, I'm going to say not, not to um, disrespect Rafi or, or any of the music, musicians there, but it was a different conjunto sound and it wasn't like as strong as uh, Johnny Pacheco, the sound that, that, that sound like it just grabbed me, but I liked playing with Rafi, but it was a different sound. It wasn't the same, you know, it, it, the thing was that. There were so many conjuntos back then that you can at least you can distinguish the different sounds of the conjuntos. That's one thing you can tell. And um, like I said, uh, I do what I do is um, is is I listen to the music and I f I can see and feel myself grooving to the music. You know what I mean? And that's what grabbed me and said, you know what I mean? I'm a more for the dancer. You know, I'm not the 
the uh, romantic singer type of music. Right. And listen, you know, my thing was like, you know, I want to see people. And 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 Joe, I tell you, man, I've done. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of the Mamoncillos. They, they it's like an old Cuban thing they used to have in in yeah. the in the in Queens. They used to have that. And I let me tell you, and it was mostly all Cubans in there. And we performed there. The first time we performed there, I remember looking at the crowd. And I saw, I saw the people dancing to our music. And you can tell they were like, they were like, Hypnotized. you knew. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were in it. And it made me feel like, wow, you know, we're doing some, you know, we're really doing some good music. And these people are so in it, man. And I've had people run up to us and say, listen, man, you guys, man, you can have two left feet, but you, I don't know what it is about your music, but it puts people to dance. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that's, that, that is like, like I was saying in the first segment, it's such a treat because people don't realize how important it is. Number one, to dance to live music because you're getting the improvisations right there on the spot, you know, True. and you, it'll never sound, you know, like, um, like the CD does, but that's, that's the juice right there. That's the, you know, el sabor, you know what I mean? When you hear it live because it's a completely brand new way of playing, you know, and, and maybe when you're looking at the dancers, you're so inspired, you're like, okay, let me give the, the conguero, let me give the piano player a little bit longer yeah. in the solo because the crowd is feeling it. So you're almost like, you know, not only leading your band, but you're leading the dancers as well. That's uh, true. As a, as a dancer, we love it because we're trying to interact with you. You know what I mean? So we're trying to be like, wow, look at the, the bongo is going on a, on a riff. And we're trying to move our bodies the same way, you know? Yeah. And I love it when, I, when I'm moving my body and I see the, I make that eye contact with the conguero. And the conguero is like, -ra -ta -ta -ta, and I'm like, I can do that too with my body. You know, and <laughs> it, that relationship is just, ah, oh, it's, 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 it's fire, man. It's really fire. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, um, you know, um, it, it, it's like, I, I when I see people dancing, I like, you know, I I love I love it. Yeah, I love and they're true. That's another thing that gives us more more reason to put out more because the people you can tell they're enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? They they're really enjoying it. And like I said, man, I I love to see people dancing. I, I really do. You know. So recently, we had an opportunity to actually uh, during the pandemic. Uh, be dancers for one of your recent releases. Tell me a little bit about your creative process. How did you come? How do you come up with new songs? Like, you know, what's the creative process behind that? Well, um, uh, how you call it? Uh, we started doing a lot of original songs. You know, uh, the early recordings, and I still do. I still believe in doing original songs. I do a lot of original, but then yet I I also like the old school classic like. Uh, Trio Matamoro, Los Compay, uh, Los, Los right. Compadre. Uh, now you're going uh, back. <laughs> yes. We're talking about my, my grandmother, you know, my father, my mother and my grandmother. And them. But um, I've heard some stuff, man. I'm like, wow, this is something that I would like to do. But now, and I, and, and it was funny because, Joe, I used to give it, I used to give the 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 singers like the the, the song and they would listen to, because they're not, they're not listening to what I'm hearing. They're only hearing what, wait a minute, this is like old school stuff, man. We're, we're going to play this, you know? But then, you know, I would send it to be arranged to, you know, a modern of what we were doing, you know, and to the modern style, rather. And um, when they came back and they were like, oh, oh, okay, now, you know, it made sense. So whenever I came with something now, then, you know, I would say, okay, aprende esto, do learn this and do that, you know, we're going to record that. And like, okay. And um, that's how I did, you know, and I would pick songs that, that I grew up with that I liked, you know, and, and then I, like, there was one tune um, called Tremendo Problema. It's done by the Oqueta Zodiac, and I went and I, I used to love playing that as a kid. Uh, also, I, I did also touch a little bit of the of the uh, DJ scene there a little bit because I used to have, <laughs> I used to have two turntables, but uh, the stereo, no, not separate turntables. There was just a, a big stereo here and a big stereo here, and I used to play with the the, the, the turntables. But you know, and I used to play that, and um, I said, man, I, when I play, when I when I get my own group one day, I'm gonna play these songs. I'm gonna play this, um, and I did. So you're dropping students. You should be listening to this. There's a lot of knowledge <laughs> being dropped. A lot of golden nuggets in these bands. Give us, give us a, a play. What should students 
new students to Mambo Salsa, what should they be listening to? Who should they be listening to? Give us a playlist. You know what? Um, I, I, Besides yes. Conjunto Mine, of course. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a ton of bands that are that are out there. But um, if you're gonna be a musician, you know, I say, you know, you know, look up your history, man. You know, look up who, you know, a lot of things that you hear today, and and and, and uh, musicians that are doing things today. If if you go back, there's musicians that did a lot of the stuff that a lot of musicians are doing today that are not, you know, like they hear something like a bass, like you know. Uh, a, a, a bass doing like a, a funky rock bass and salsa, but that's been here for a while, man. You know what I mean? That we had Salvador Cueva do that. You know, we had um, a, a gentleman by the name of Bobby Ro Rodriguez that was, you know, from the old school that did all of that stuff. So the, anything that you're seeing, hearing today is not pretty much new. You know, a lot of people hear salsa in English. No, that's not new. That's that was here already. You know what I'm saying? Just that it was just called something different. Um, the only thing I can say today more is that, yeah, we, you know, the music is now going towards more like a, a, a pop, you know what I mean? It, it's leaving the, the dancer scene a little bit, you know what I mean? Instead of the, you know, if people hear it, they're like, you know, okay, yeah, they sound good, but they like, they, the music is kind of like old school. No, it's, it's not old school. It's just, it's just uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you what old school. I can take out stuff that's old school. That's old school. But you know, we try to keep that tradition going, that that conjunto flavor sound, you know. So, what uh, what bands do you uh, do you like nowadays? You know, what music do you think uh, students should be hearing from nowadays artists? You know, um, yeah, everything because today is it's more um, diversity. It's more there's more music now. I mean, you got uh, you got Russians playing salsa. You got you know <laughs> European Japanese playing salsa. People. Japanese, you know, so I, I say everything that, you know, don't, don't leave, don't leave anything out, you know, just learn. I mean, if you're musicians, you're going to learn, if you're going to play an instrument, uh, learn your instrument. You know what I'm saying? Know what your instrument is made out of, who made that instrument, who came up with it, um, you know, how's the way to play it. And, and then, you know, master it, try to master it as much as you can. And for the dance it's the same thing. You know, if you're about dancing, you know, um, uh, I know dancing, a lot of dancing is a lot of counting, but it's mostly, mostly here. You know, it's in the heart. So, um, you know, if you're going to pick up dancing, everything. Just, to, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I love my salsa and everything, but I like, I like my reggaeton too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we at the... Um... At the at the school, we tell uh, the new students that are learning, you know, they, they go, oh, you know, I hate counting. I'm like, well, you know, think about it this way. You have to learn how to count so that later on you don't have to count. It then comes you naturally. Let it, it comes naturally. Then you just let it out. You just let, it, let the soul touch the music, you know. Yeah. But you have to have some structure first. And in the beginning, it's a little tough because you got to get used to counting. You got to get used to learning your tempo, learning your rhythm, keeping pace and all that. But mm -hmm. once you have that... Then you can just set, set yourself free at that point. Talk to me about the, you know, you talked a little bit about the early part of your career. How did Conjunto Imagen get started? Where did that name come from? Who were the first musicians? How did it come together? <laughs> so, yeah, Conjunto Imagen was founded in 1989. Uh, it was founded by yours truly, uh, Junior Rivera, which plays the, tres, the Cuban tres guitar, and the bongo player, which is my compadre, uh, Luis Campana Hernandez. Uh, we at the time, you know, we performed with a Johnny Pacheco. We traveled with Pacheco. Uh, we did uh, Celia Cruz. I mean, when we were with Pacheco. We backed up Daniel Santos, Celia Cruz, Pide Conde. Uh, uh, what's his name? It the uh, Celio Gonzalez. I mean, Dan Daniel Santos. I, I can go on and on. But, Keep um, going on and on. These, <laughs> students, these students need to know these people. They need to listen to their music, man. Yeah, um, about the, the originators right there. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. And that was that was our school. So, uh, you know, uh, we sat down one day, and 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 things started getting slow for for. Uh, at that time, we were with uh, Johnny Pacheco and Hector Casanova. Pacheco's. Um, he wasn't around as much. He would just send the band without, without, uh, without himself, and then we would. It would be Casano and Montuno. And um, 
then things started slowing down for him, you know what I mean? And then we uh, we decided to just lay back. And then, you know, one day we're sitting at the house. We were uh, hanging out, just having a few drinks. And then, um, you know, uh, one of the guys said, yo, why don't we come up with a recording? And I said, you know what? We should we should record something with our name, you know, with us, you know, because we were recording with them, but we never did anything for ourselves, you know? So I said, let's do something for ourselves. And then we sat down one day and... Um, uh, we came out with a song. Uh, we we originated one song uh, called um, "Tumba Tres Mongo," which is the title of my first album. And we sat down, and since I was the tumba, Junior was the tres, and Campana was the bongo. Anyway, so we uh, we wrote up some words, put some words together, and 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 be, honestly, um, at that time, I, you know, I spoke Spanish, but not as much as I speak now. You know, I, my Spanish was really broken up back then. It was like just <laughs> Learning how to speak, and um, como they say, um, we did that, and um, we sat down, and then we left, and then we called each other and said, "Yo, we, this is a great idea. Let's let's you know, let's put this together." And uh, we put the song together, and then then we said, "Hold on a minute, but uh, you know, what name are we gonna come with? You know, what what's the name for a group?" And um, we came up with a couple of names, and uh, nah, nah. So then I, I'm saying like, you know, I went to the dictionary and I'm going to the dictionary to find them, just find a name or a, a word, you know? And I came up with image. The word image came up, right? And I said, wow, image. Um, how do you say image in Spanish? Then uh, Louis says, uh, I think you say um, imagen, I think it's called, it says in Spanish. <laughs> and I'm like, imagen. Okay, conjunto imagen. And it sounded strange. I was like, wow, conjunto imagen. And, and we couldn't pronounce it really pretty much because, we, we, again, we didn't know the Spanish. So Junior was like, yeah, let's do conjunto imagen. And I was like, all right, conjunto imagen it is. And like I tell you, I say it now like that, but oh, at that time it was like conjunto imagen sounded like it was rough and hard, you know? So we um, we put that name t to play and um, how you call it? When we recorded the first album, that's the name of the album. And then when we were rehearsing, getting everything together, uh, people would ask, "What's the name of the group?" Conti Mind. And everybody, it was the same response to like everybody, Conti Mind. Yeah, Conti Mind. But it took a while. And look, man, 30, 32 years later, man, Conti Mind. You know what I'm saying? So over those thirty-two years, you know, I'm sure there's been a lot of musicians that go in and out. Are, are the founders of the group still around? Yeah, um, Junior's still here. Um, Louis Campana, he left for a little while and he came back. He's been with, he's been back with us now for about five years. Nice. Um, yeah, um, the original guys are just me, uh, Junior, and and Louis Campana. Everyone else, um, I'm gonna say from after the third album, everyone has been you know it's been different except the bass player. The bass player has been with me for like thirty years. You know what wow. I mean? Or or, or twenty nine years. Uh, Louis Arona, he's been with us for a long time. Uh, I'm gonna say he's like the other guy. The, uh, actually, let me go back a little bit because there was another guy that was involved with us also that um, that he moved to Florida and uh, you know due to you know um, um, his wife's health and all that they had to leave mm -hmm. the state of New York to go to uh, climax a better climax for his wife. You know, sure. sure. So. Um, Angelo Gonzalez, he was my trumpet, my lead trumpet player and uh, musical director, and he was the one that used to direct the band, the band from the back, you know. And he was with us, uh, and he was with us from day one. Actually, he, he he didn't get to record the first album, but when I started rehearsing the band, that I put the band together, he was the first one there. And um, I've had musicians come through here, and I've had musicians that come and say like. Yeah, you know, you guys are just starting. Uh, you guys are not probably gonna make it. You know what I mean? The, you know, don't take it wrong. But you know, I I rather be with somebody that's already playing than you guys are just starting. And and I understood that. You know, I said, you know, the politics, the politics. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I understand. And and it, it's funny because after that, you know, then these guys they came they came back because they saw that the band started playing. Uh, it was already three or four years, and the band was playing a lot. And they were like, yo, you guys all over the place. You know, now everybody wanted to play with the band because now <laughs> we were we were performing. So, you know, like I said, so in, in the band, the original guys, you know, um, it's me, Louis, and Junior, and Louis, the bass player. And everybody that's been in the band right now, I, I'm going to be honest with you, the, the, the newest guy here, um, it's a trumpet player. 
And um, he's been with me now. It's going to be a year he's been with me. And he's the earliest one. And he just started with me because, of the, you know, we came back and we did a couple of things right after the pandemic. But, you know, right. um, we just haven't been playing. So what we've been doing was, uh, you know, recording stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just getting stuff out in the street to just to let the people know that uh, we do still exist. You know? Yeah, of course, of course. What What do you look for in uh, in in a musician? I guess to join Conjunto Imagen. What What makes a great musician? Um, well, number one is you know I, I, I he has to be drug free, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, we run a really tight shift here, a tight band, and um, you gotta be you gotta be in it. And if you have that 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 um that thing that you know nah this is like a hobby for me but this is not the band for you because this is a job for me you know and and one thing that i've always joe that i can tell you that i've always um anybody can tell you that i've always maintained in this band is that you know my job is to make sure that we sound good at all times because if we don't sound good at all times you know even some some uh engineers that do the sound for us i fight because <laughs> you know, because some people don't understand, you know, the sound may be all, all crapped up, man. But you know what I'm saying? The, some people just say, oh, my God, they don't sound nothing like they used to. You know what I mean? And and, and, right. and that can be, uh, um, you know, purpose of the of the sound. If the sound's not clear and you don't, I don't hear my voices and uh, my horns and the way everything's supposed to sound, then the people out there, they don't hear, they don't think it's the sound guy. They're going to say like, oh, my God, the singer, you couldn't even hear him. Oh, my God, you know, your trumpet's, <laughs> age, you know. No, I, I always look to try to tighten up my sound and right. and and make sure that you know. And again, like I said, I look for musicians that are that are a hundred percent, you know, involved in the music. You know, you're gonna come here, we're gonna do a job. We want you to do your job. Whatever you do after that is on you. But you are coming to do a job, and we want the people to always say they always sound good. They always, you know, and and even on my worst days that somebody may be sick or, or we're not we're not sounding right or something. I still get compliments and, and, and I'm like, Oh my God, these people are not hearing, hearing what I, but you know, that, that's my, my critique myself because of, of, you know, as a musician, you know, I know what we, I know what we're capable of, you know, sure. and sometimes, you know, we have, a, we have like anybody, we have an, an off, off day, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, so, so we, we deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, dancers go through the same thing and, and the dance company, sometimes we perform and we know at what level we can deliver. And True. yet, because of the floor, or because you know someone's mm -hmm. sick, or you know there's bad lighting on us, you know, and they, the audience couldn't see us all of a sudden, or the music got cut, and the, the, there's technical problems. So there's, there's things that can happen. One of the things I can tell you, as I remind the students again, Conjunto Imagen, April 1st, guys, at SOBs, come and support the band, come and support music, come and support Pia Canana Dance School on Friday, April 1st. The doors open up at 6 30. People don't know that. The venue of SOBs got renovated during the pandemic. So you're in for a treat. I think that the musicians are going to really like it because they have a brand new sound system, brand new board, awesome. brand new speakers. They had the company uh, come in and actually gauge the sound at each one of the corners of the room. Uh, and that is quite an investment on SOB's part to deliver okay. to their uh, patrons. And the bands that are coming now are going, wow, look at the sound here. So I think um, you're right, and and I think it's a venue's duty to make sure that the sound sounds great if the band is ready to go ahead and jam. Absolutely, and ready to have a good time. So, and, and let me tell you, Joe, I'm, it's been, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, the last time I played there was for what album that I that I did the um, I uh, did the uh, uh, record release party because it's um, it was called record release party then it wasn't called CDs release party, but it was our record release party. And then, let me see what album was that. That was um, that was that was I think in two thousand four, if I'm Ooh. not mistaken. And that was uh, the CD ayer, hoy, ayer hoy mañana. And um, yeah. Yeah. I did that CD, and we we uh, we did the record release there. And that's how long I haven't played there. So also, this is gonna be one hell of a night, guys. I hope everybody's listening, and I hope everybody yeah. really gets ready to so end you, this. Man. To end this yeah. part, this second part of the segment, I'm going to ask you one last question, and that's: What's the best piece of advice another musician ever gave you? Well, you know what? Um, I remember um, this gentleman by the name of Ray Maldonado. Uh, he was a trumpet player, and um, he was uh, 
Richie Ray's brother. He okay. passed. He passed, you know. And um, actually, Richie and it was Richie and Ray, but uh, <laughs> Ray was his brother. So his right. brother left the band. Once his brother left the band, then it became Richie Ray. You know okay. what I'm saying? So he told me one time, he, I remember him telling me, he was the, the musical director for Hector Lavoe. And um, I went on stage, I was in front of the stage and, and um, uh, Eddie Montavo was there and he left the conguero. And he told me, he said, uh, listen, um, can you play with us? And I said, sure, I'll play. He told me, come and play. I said, okay. And I went up there, you know, and I was like the first time I've ever played with Hector Lavoe, you know? And I was like, you know, to play with Hector Lavoe, was, you know, it's a big thing for me. It was wow. something big. So I went on that stage and I played. And I felt so good and humble about it, man, that I, you know, I, I said to him, because he came, to, he went to pay me, you know, and I said, nah, you know, it was just, you know, it was a, just a treat for me to perform with Hector Lavo. And that, for me, was enough. He told me, no, don't ever think that way, all right? He told me just <laughs> like this, make sure you get paid. Anything you do, you get paid. Get your money. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was like, okay. I took the money, and I was like, all right. And that was an advice that he told me, make sure you always get paid. And then I was starting, you know, I was starting playing with uh, Oca de Leon, Celia Cruz. I, you know, hey, what's my money? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but that was his, you know, that was his um his advice. Know, his advice to me was to, you know, make sure you get paid, Ernie. Don't, you know, I know that, you know, Hector I was this, that, but get paid. You yeah, did and a job. I think I I think a lot of students um, don't understand how much passion you have when you're in the arts and artists tend to have that problem that sometimes we're like, you know what, we don't even want to get paid. We just want to do what we do, you know, whether it be a dancing, mu playing music or, you know, sculpting or painting us, you know, because we have so much passion. We just want to give it away completely for free. What people sometimes forget is that, hey, we have to pay rent, too. <laughs> That we have true. expenses. We have a, a way of life, uh, you know, that we're trying to maintain. We have families and so forth. And yes, you know, even the artists have to kind of take a step back and uh, and realize, hey, you know what? I need to charge for this, you know, and I, I I can't do stuff for free because I also have to maintain my lifestyle. So great advice, fantastic advice, guys. You've been listening to. Mr. Ernie Acevedo, band leader of Conjunto Imagen, who's going to be coming and playing for the Pia Canana Dance School and for everybody because it's open for the public. The more, the merrier. Invite a few friends and we'll see you in part three of this interview. But get ready because Friday, April 1st is right around the corner.